Wonderful. Well, it's uh, a real privilege to um, bring a message from the, as we open up John's Gospel this morning. And I want to look at Jesus dwelling amongst us this morning. Jesus dwelling amongst us. Now, as a family, and I think in the newsletter, I just introduced some of my kids and my dog and my husband to you. So have a look on the newsletter to find out my family and and see their pictures on there. But as a family, we've really loved going to the theatre, any kind of theatre, whether it's a musical or um, whether it's a play, anything. And it's more to do with the atmosphere as you go in and the beautiful scenery and the lights and the ice cream and everything like that. It's a real treat for us to do it. And one of the most exciting ones that we went to, and I don't know if you've ever been to see it, is Phantom of the Opera. Phantom of the Opera, absolutely awesome. It's a musical set in the 19th century in Paris in an opera house there. And the beginning, I put some pictures up here, is this in the stage, there's this wonderful chandelier, all these lights around, and the stage starts very derelict. It looks like it's been forgotten, and it tells the story in Paris. And as the music starts, as the curtains open, this chandelier rises right up, and the whole of the theatre comes alive. It changes and it becomes part of the story. You go back in time and see it. Now, I think what the chandelier is gorgeous, but what really makes this play, this musical, is the music. Now, there's this organ that plays the overture, the, the beginning tune, and it comes booming in as loud as anything. And it takes you out of your seat as the chandelier light goes up and it changes the whole scenery. It's absolutely amazing. That just to go for the beginning scene is truly remarkable. And as I was reading John's Gospel, I felt a little bit of that excitement, that buzz, that impact, that amazement as he blasts into John's gospel with this wonderful text here, this wonderful verses that actually start to connect Jesus with God. And it's like that, that overture that comes in a blast. He goes for it right at the beginning. This beautiful prologue, this poetry that he uses is a wonderful entrance that takes us right through the Bible from creation and he lays it out to us like in a theatre. Now I want us to look at two things today. We're looking at the word becoming flesh. So we're going to look at the word and then we're going to look at the word dwelling amongst us. When we think of the word, when I was thinking of the word, I was thinking of the Bible, the living word. If, if I talk about the word, I, I go to my Bible, the living word. It's, it's God-inspired word that goes through all out history, throughout time in the past and the present and the future. It's like active, it's transforming me in my character. And John reveals the word of God as one becoming flesh. The Word became human. The Word is Jesus, the living, breathing Jesus. Now, when we go back in time and look at Genesis, right at the beginning, we read, don't we, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning. What do we read in John's Gospel? In the beginning. And John's talking this, writing this, and the people of the time know the Old Testament inside out, and they're making this connection in the beginning, in the beginning, in Genesis. They're making this link throughout time. In the beginning was the Word. So what we're seeing here, that in the beginning 
was Jesus. In the beginning, Jesus was with God throughout eternity, throughout creation. There was this close, intimate relationship of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the beginning. And Jesus was God. Jesus was distinct and separate, but one with God and the Spirit. So the Word became flesh. Now, if you go back, for some of us, it could be a long time, but to your science lessons in your secondary school, you learn about all those things that make us human. I think we had about seven things then. And talking to my teenage kids, there's a lot more nowadays. But things that make us human, you know, eating and drinking, walking, breathing, excreting, reproducing, all those things that a human being can do. That's what makes someone human. And the DNA that goes right through us makes us thrive, makes us live. You see, Jesus was born human. He had all those things that human has. You know, he was human. And being human, Jesus was actually placed into a community. He wasn't just separate, you know, God separate. He was born into a community. And in that community, he was a Middle Eastern man. He was doing things with them and like them. He had compassion and he cried and he laughed and he spoke and he, and he walked with them. He lived as a human within that community. And if we look back, if we look a little bit at uh, Philippians 2, we can see how this plays out. Jesus, who in the very being, in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God as something for his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing. He took the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness, and being found in the appearance of man. And he humbled himself. God, Jesus, can you see the link here? So I want us to hold on. Jesus was God. Jesus was with God. And Jesus became man, was man. So dwelling amongst us, what does that actually mean? In verse 14, the word became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us. Now we have to go a little bit back in time, not right to Genesis, but we're going to go to Exodus. And there was this character, Moses, wasn't there, in Exodus. And what he did is he set up a little tent of meeting. He set up what they call as a tabernacle, a place where God's glory filled that place. And God's glory filled the place and Moses came along and he was chatting with God and being with God in that presence there because God wanted to be with the Israelites. He was desperate to be with them. And Moses went up the mountain and got those Ten Commandments, came back down to the tabernacle. God was in the dwelling of that tent here. And what we're seeing in the gospel is John comparing Jesus to that tabernacle. God's dwelling in the tabernacle, God's dwelling in Jesus as a human. Emmanuel, God with us. We sing that, don't we, at Christmas. God coming to us in Jesus. The whole glory in Jesus. And you see, Jesus' ministry wasn't separate or in a little tent. Jesus' ministry was full of the power of the Holy Spirit. 
as we see in the beginning of the time, the Trinitarian, being God the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. He walked, he breathed, he prayed, he did everything in the power of the Spirit. And I don't know about you, but if Jesus depended on the Spirit, I need to depend on it totally in my life. Now, four children. The eldest two were born very close together, and the second two were really born close together. But when I had the eldest two, someone gave us a bunk bed. You know, if they thought that would be very handy. So we put this bunk bed up, not ready just yet. But this bunk bed became a haven for delight in the day. Can you imagine? I don't know if you've ever done this, putting up blankets on that bottom bunk and quilts and, and cushions and making it a den underneath our, our bunk beds. And one day it would be a pirate's boat. The next day we'd turn it into a bus or a little cafe or a zoo. Got all our animals in there. And our eldest, Joshua, loved it. He used to be in there all the time, and we'd change it all the time, this little haven. And at night time, it became his little space, his safe little bed, enclosed. Now, at the time, my husband was in the Met Police, and he was on these special undercover projects. So that meant that he wasn't home a lot. He was on very long shift away. And I had, you know, a little baby and a toddler. So, at night time, I'd feed in the baby, Abigail, and then Joshua was in his little haven, all settled. Then I'd hear those words, Mommy, Mommy, <gasps> getting up in the night, thinking it's okay, I'll go. And I slip into his little camp in that bunk bed in that haven and lay beside him. And as soon as I laid alongside him, he felt my breathing, I felt his breathing, he felt my heartbeat, I felt his heart beat. There was this connection, and he just rested and slept. And often, I rested and I slept, <laughs> not getting back up. But you see, when Jesus says, come and follow me, it's not this distance is this dwelling place with him. So we can hear his voice, we can hear his heartbeat through the power of the Spirit. You see, living in close relationship with Jesus through the Spirit is how we do life. Because in the Bible it says, Jesus said, I will promise I will give you a helper, an advocate to be with you forever living, dwelling inside us. So it's this call to come and abide, walk or um, be with in the presence of the Spirit and know God, the Father, the Son and the Spirit fully. And as we start to give our attention to Jesus, we start to know him better. I've got so much to learn, and I'm so excited. The more I give to Jesus, the more I know him. Now, Brother Lawrence was a monk about 300 years ago, and he spent his whole life trying to be as close as he could to God the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. And as he did that, he realized it wasn't just in his prayer life, but it was in the kitchen duties it was when he was scrubbing the floor. His whole devotion, his whole de attention meant that he was dwelling with God every single day. And from this vast opening of John's gospel, he pours us back into this moment here when there's this wonderful relationship with Jesus, who is God, who is with God and who is among us in the power of his spirit. To dwell is in God's presence is to be with him. And I don't know about you, but I want to know him and to be known by Jesus more. So let's just take a few moments of silence in, in thought.
And yes, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this beginning of John's Gospel. Holy Spirit, come and refresh us. Come and dwell in us because we want to be known by you and we want to know you more. Amen.